just as she believes that a child is a person and entitled to respect and consideration, Catherine Hartford, another wife in our town, believes a married woman is a person too. Dancing. Can you when you're menstruating? With moderation. In fact, you can do most of the things you usually do. You can bathe or shower as long as you use warm water. And you can wash your hair and make sure the girl will be. And you can swim if you wait until I think two or three days at the beginning of your period. And you can go to dances and picnics. But it's not a very good idea to skate or ride horseback or play fast games like volleyball and basketball or do strenuous dancing like square dancing. You know, I've often wondered why it is that some women still call menstruation the curse. curse. I don't know. <laughs> This cult of invalidism in the 19th century grew and flourished. Publicists all around told women that, middle class women, that they should be sick. Uh, a booming industry of uh, sexual surgeons and sexual doctors attending to female complaints grew up telling women that normal, healthy uh, processes were in fact diseases like menstruation, sexual desire, or the manifestations of diseases. And uh, middle class women got sick. Uh, again in the 50s, when the economy needed women to leave war work, uh, when the men were returning from the front, this society desperately needed an ideology that would drive us back into the home and convince them that the idea of woman was the full-time happy homemaker, absolutely obsessed with the shiny perfect floor. How, how did it go today, Joe? Oh, all right. Uh, I, you know, I had seven requests for time off today. Uh, well, I guess women don't realize what it means to stick on the job. Six. How was your day? Peace. I did the washing this morning. I get up. I cleaned the house. Get the children. Get their no, I took Junior together. to the dentist. Uh -huh. Clean the house. And did the shopping. Might be washing. I put up 16 jars of gin this afternoon. It's not ironing. I then I went to work on Junior's clothes. Sure. It's not. No. I'm sorry supper's late. Nice going, old lady. <laughs> Women. According to my research, 25 to 40 percent of the gross national product of Western countries is with women who work for free. Sons are expected to be more independent, to control their feelings, and assume more responsibility. Parents also expect boys to be strong-willed, hard to control their feelings, hard to tell and ambitious. It's good to make them push themselves to the limit of, of their capabilities and maybe sometimes beyond their capabilities. As far as girls are as far as girls are concerned, girls get more pressure to be obedient, kind and unselfish, to be attractive and loving, well mannered. They want their little girls to be ladylike and therefore not to be aggressive or to be assertive. They supervise the activities of their daughters more than they do the sons. In the family, at school, and then at the university. We are already being limited at an early age. As long as we, their mothers, are so ambivalent about this issue of dependence versus independence, 
The daughters are taking that message home. El sueño de todas mujeres. The dream of every woman is to get married, have a family, children, a home. I never thought of that. I wanted something more. One has to do something for the world, not just have children, which is something too. One should accomplish something, do something more. You know the difference between a Caesar salad and a blowjob? She says no. <laughs> and he says, okay, let's go to lunch. American parents want boys. Mothers have a two-to-one preference. For fathers, it's even higher. Couples with only girls are more likely to go on having children than couples who already have boys. From the moment the newborn boy is swaddled in a blue blanket and his sister in a pink one, the two children are regarded differently. And thus begins the largely unconscious process of preparing boys to be men and girls to be women. Our preference for one sex over the other and the distinctions that we make from the very beginning set in motion a pattern of treatment which continues right through childhood and probably life. Our stereotypes and assumptions about what is appropriate for a boy or a girl are so deeply ingrained that we make distinctions on the basis of gender without even being aware of it. It is that training in our families that allows us to believe that a son is worth more than a daughter and should get m more education money, that the wife's uh, career aspirations or life in general is somehow subordinate or secondary to her husband's life. It is that deepest patterning from our, from our infancy that allows us to believe that some people are born more superior than others. Who do you think is smarter, boys or girls? Really? Boys, why is that? Why are boys smarter? It is very important to understand the meaning of psychological statements that say males are more aggressive than females, females are more nurturing than males. The average person who hears that... I don't like to see noisy girls, active girls, rambunctious. Uh, I'd like them to be, you know, ladylike, for want of a better word. Quiet. In the kitchen, hands at the typewriter, purrs and bears. She walks, she talks, she even wet. I would hope that my daughters weren't tomboys. And in just a few short minutes from now, ladies and gentlemen, we will know the name of our new Miss America. gives a girl a chance to show what she can do. I did a, a little survey of what was on the cover of Life for the last 50 years. Um, out of all the covers, the men on the covers were individuals, politicians, uh, statesmen, anchormen. The women on the covers, except for I think about 19 out of 50 years, were models or actresses. All I'm suggesting is that in this environment of heavy media censorship, there, it's almost impossible to have the imaginative range as a woman to see yourself aging, to see yourself being an individual instead of a, a stereotype. The faces of older women are routinely airbrushed so that we never see uh, older women represented admiringly in culture looking their age. Now what this does to a woman who's aging, never ever to see a beautiful 65-year-old face that looks 65, is crippling. Oh, but I am real. Fancy that. Say, beautiful, let me in on the secret. What's going on here anyway? What are your hopes? What are your ambitions? What's your phone number? Who are you anyway? Who are you? The representation of, of men in the world is not limited to those men who are beautiful. Uh, increasingly, the beauty myth is being used to make women not only feel but believe, to make it be true that their careers, their income, their livelihood depends upon their conforming to these stereotypes, that their sexuality depends upon conforming to these stereotypes, that their sense of self-worth as human beings depends upon it, that their visibility on the planet depends upon it. Now, those are very difficult things to negotiate with. Um, impossible, I would say. 
if you just look at the numbers that I cite, and my book is full of quite shocking and horrific statistics, uh, eating disorders, just to take one example, have grown so exponentially in Western industrialized nations that now, according to Time magazine, 50% of all American women between the ages of 10 and 30 suffer from either anorexia or bulimia. Uh, that's mind-blowing. Uh, uh, cosmetic surgery is the fastest growing medical specialty. Um, the uh, profession of image consultant grew by eightfold over the course of the 80s. Clearly, something's happening here. But even if she has no blemishes, there is still a great adjustment for Janie to make. She sees herself now as she is going to be throughout her life. Perhaps in childhood, she dreamed of becoming a glamorous beauty. Now she must realize that she is just an ordinary looking girl. Which brings us back to how we started this whole discussion, that kind of existential fear that's involved in being an autonomous adult human being goes across the board. It has nothing to do with gender. But I think the ways in which we were either trained to deal with it or not trained to deal with it are very different and have had tremendous effects on us. And strength is symbolically associated with power. Power is a metaphor for strength in many ways. And so when the concept of power enters the child's mind, the earlier conviction that males were generally stronger than females leads them easily to conclude, unconsciously of course, that when it comes to power... Are you suggesting that it is because we are macho, men are taught to be macho, that there is as much rape as there is? Let's go. I think it's important to, for boys to play on a team sport, to be aggressive. No, uh, no, no, I'm saying, I'm talking about culture, not biology. And the peer group pressure that I find I'm under is to really get involved with somebody sort of being labeled as a kind of a slut if you're not, if you don't get very intensely involved and if you just have sort of casual sexual relationships, that, that is frowned upon for women. Yeah, it is. A girl. You have to yeah. We don't even realize what goes on until we sit and compare it with other women and say, damn, the same thing happened to me. We find out over and over again. That's why, like, to break out of our, our oppression, you know, just what you said about the support. You know, it's so necessary. You have to do it. Oh, don't go away, mad girl. There's still hope. Oh, there is. But where is it? I think a lot has changed in the last 20 years. Then we came back and came back and came back. We came back and 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 came back. Bride trafficking is relatively new in India. It has emerged in just the last two decades. Mais la plupart des fistules de post-violence, ce sont des fistules qui surviennent après les rapports sexuels. Les agresseurs, dans le but de torturer la personne, et ils introduisent un corps étranger, soit une arme. Na ma chéché là, ma passe au poyon ni chi pata là. Donc ni on ne chante tout de carrière tant que on ne chi pata samra. Sex selective abortions. Because sons were preferred, many would be daughters were aborted, meaning there are over 20 million more men than women in China. Female infanticide was not a concern of the government. The man cannot find a wife. Is. How have I never noticed that I'm always picturing men when I don't know the gender of the person unless they specify that it's a woman and so then I realized it was doctor, lawyer, politician. But here, women aren't allowed to swim. They remain second-class citizens. In the Wahhabi Kingdom, women cannot drive or travel without the permission of a guardian. Dozens of women were crashing their cars under the influence of sleeping pills. But it turns out, women metabolize the active ingredient in Ambien twice as slowly as men. The active ingredient in Tylenol, it's flushed from a woman's body slower than in men, so the prescribed dosage can put women at more risk for potential overdose and liver failure. And one heart medication that's supposed to prevent heart attacks may actually trigger one in women. There's no research.
that if a woman is in a crash, she is 47% more likely to be seriously injured and 17% more likely to die. The whole car is set up for women to be out of position drivers. A fifth of women, in fact, have been sexually assaulted on uh, buses and tubes, and 90% of them didn't report it. Whether, in fact, an event occurred, whether an individual's description of that event is reliable. Each and every one of those witnesses will be uh, subjected to investigation and rigorous cross-examination. The credibility of their story will be very much at issue. Dans sa société, si c'était une jeune fille qui n'était pas encore mariée, si c'était une jeune fille qui n'était pas encore mariée ou bien elle était fiancée, actuellement les parents considèrent qu'ils n'ont plus rien à gagner. It's common practice over there. Everyone's used to it. It's quite a normal thing to kill your daughter for not being a virgin. There's so many women out there who have gone to FGM who have infertility. I know a nine-year-old girl who has incontinence, constant uh, infections, pain. And this happened to me because I was born a girl in the wrong place. It's up 62% for older teen girls. It's up like 89%. We see the same pattern. The preteen girls who have very low rates of skin with they are The World Health Organization says a woman dies every eight minutes from an unsafe abortion. She is most likely poor. Domestic violence is the leading cause of injury to women in the U.S. Every day, in this country alone, more than three women are murdered by their partners or loved ones. and I still find it now. It's like half the liberal in me that's saying, oh, come on, you're not oppressed. You know, you're this middle-class woman who's had all kinds of education and, and wonderful, cushy New York publishing jobs. You're not oppressed. And I was very much not a feminist. Um, I thought feminism was kind of embarrassing, really. And if women weren't, we were just a bit less shit, uh, probably they would be doing better. It's not an African problem. It's not a Middle Eastern problem. It's not white. It's not black. It has no color. It's everybody's problem. Many of us who are living now will never see the end of the conflict which dominates our lives. But for generations, or certainly for many years, the challenge which confronts us will continue. So it becomes not just a hope, but an urgent condition for a peaceful future that understand the challenge and devote themselves to it even as you and I must. <laughs>